Hi everybody, we are in Da Nang, Da Nang, Da Nang, Vietnam. with several fine expats. Let me introduce our panel guests. This is Nick. Oh, where are you from, Nick? Originally, I'm from Chicago in the USA. Uh, currently, I reside in Saudi Arabia, but I lived here in Da Nang for about four years. Okay. And uh, to his left, we have Chris. Where are you from, Chris? I'm from the UK, originally from Scotland, but a few other places since then, so your audience might understand me. But uh, yeah, Hi. I've uh, been in Da Nang for nine years. Okay, well, cancel the translator. Thank you. <laughs> uh, and uh, to his left, we have... Um, John Amru. Um, that was very loud. Anyway, I'm also from southern England, where you moved to after Scotland. So very close to where Chris grew up. But I only met him here, so here in Vietnam. And last but not least, we have... Carly. And I am also from America. I'm originally from Cleveland, Ohio. Okay. Midwestern girl. What are you guys doing here in a world that's halfway or almost all the way away from whence UK? It's a great big wide world. And there's a lot of reasons that the US has, especially in recent years, become less and less a desirable place to live. We're not getting into any politics or business or anything else. You can, I think, simply live a much more comfortable life abroad. And at the same time, experience a lot of adventures and new and unique things. So, yeah. Okay, well, what do you do here usually in Da Nang? Uh, well, what have you done in the past? In the past, in Da Nang, I, I did a number of things. I was a professional writer for a while. I talked for a good while, both at a university and online. Um, you find a lot of different opportunities as an expat, which, you know, they present themselves really quite readily, especially here in Southeast Asia. Have you uh, worked with uh, any of these folks here? Uh, I mean, uh, not collaborative. Indirectly. Indirectly, yes. Oh, yeah, oh, we've worked directly. for the same company. Uh, so, the plumbing? Well, no, we've worked for the same company, but I don't think we ever actually worked together. Also, I've worked with all of them on different uh, projects and activities. That Such as? Theater production. Oh, theater productions. Improv. Improv. Uh, yeah. okay. Pop quiz. Pop quiz. Yes. Okay. How many people come out to these events that you've been at point of? Sometimes a lot, sometimes hardly any. No. It varies yeah. on the event. Sometimes we can get this place completely packed, and then other times no one shows up. Expats are a fickle crowd. And, <laughs> and, uh, and then often people traveling from Hanoi and Vietnam and Saigon, when they come to Da Nang and they see that something like that is on, they want to see Da Nang's version of it too, because maybe they've seen it in Hanoi or Saigon already. How long have you lived here, and what do you do here? So I've been here for nine years. Um, I came here with the intention of uh, opening an uh, arts and creative kind of place, which which I did. Uh, and that's where we're sitting now, which has been going for uh, seven and a half years. Wow, that sounds it sounds as if you've been fairly, very successful in that. Well, uh, successful is, is what successful does. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, aside from that, yeah, when I first moved here, I was teaching English as well. That's what I, you know, allowed me to have the time and the resources to be able to do that. And uh, then moved on to more teaching art, doing just events. And uh, now these days, uh, since COVID, now I've started working for the same company that Nick has done writing for, which is a media company, international media company. Okay. What brought you here, this uh, look out? Yeah. And uh, um, I was in a summer camp job in Italy when I met this Irish friend of mine we hit it off and uh, he told me about Vietnam as a, a place where I could get out under the feet of my parents because like in England there's no way I could afford a place of my own anywhere yeah. the opportunity was English teaching and the way he sold it is like you we you'd probably be working about four hours a day Monday to Friday actually and that turned out to be true well, I met this improv group based on the one in Hanoi. I spent the first two years of my life in Vietnam, in Hanoi, before moving here. And I've been here two years as well. 
and we met and we hit it off. But uh, then I got a job opportunity with someone that was leaving. It's all opportunity. It's all like who you can know. Cause like Danang's a smaller city. So you've got to know people to really get into the business is really, yeah. Just being here and we'll open up doors for you. Yeah. The amazing thing about Vietnam is just like talking to people. Yeah. You will be invited to places and you'll start work and yeah. make friends first and have a job later. There's certainly a lot more opportunity just by being here and doing things, being active, putting yourself out here than you would get back home. Yeah. Uh, what brought you to Vietnam, Arlie? Basically, I just stepped bored of Thailand and my friend Jonathan, who is South African, says, oh, come to Vietnam. There's so much different opportunities. There's so many different things to do instead of just going to the beach or a waterfall. So I just can't, you can only do that so much until you get bored. So I'm like, okay, I'll try Vietnam. And he says you work a lot less, so I ended up in Hanoi. And I kind of got bored of Hanoi. I didn't really, couldn't really make friends because of the way I worked. And then I just came down to Da Nang for a week, loved it, ended up being here six years. Wow. Well, and that's how you met uh, these fine gentlemen, and maybe all three of them uh, mm-hmm. here. Well, I met him in Hanoi. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah. Yes. What's, what's the history behind the, the, the theater group here? Do you, well, you uh, yeah. yeah, so that was something uh, Before we wrap up. that has been going now for probably about seven years, I suppose, six and a half. A lot of uh, expats left during COVID and immediately after that. But uh, so a lot of groups did dissipate or maybe activities didn't start back up. But we were fortunate that we had enough people with improv to uh, keep that scene alive. And I'm, I'm really happy we have and we've been joined by more people now. So it's something that stayed alive for the. For yeah, it's gone through stages. Like first it was like. It was just strictly theater, and then it then at one time or strictly just improv, and then at one time now we do a bunch of different kinds of things. There's so much interesting, exciting stuff to do. You often find yourself well, if you have a four day work, a four hour work day, it's not too bad, but it's hard to focus sometimes on getting things done here. Alas, it's just too much fun. Too much fun. A lot of things going on. But you seem to be you seem to be better connected with people in this uh, kind of setting in the name. And uh, I, I, did you ever feel isolated in Saudi Arabia? Oh, well, how did you deal with that? Just speak. You know, I was really lucky in that when I started, I went over there as a teacher originally. Now I do consulting work, and I came over with a dozen, a group of a dozen teachers, and I we just got on like wildfire. So I immediately had friends over there. And I've met more local friends. So it's, to me, not a very isolating experience. But at the same time, it's very, very limiting. Also, the weather is limiting in that when it's 50 degrees outside, you simply can't do anything. Regents. How hot does it get down around here? 40. 40. But it's sweaty. It's humid. Very, very humid. But there is something to be said about uh, living outside your own little uh, home bubble and... uh, you're and being that uh, adventurous soul that goes out and sees what lies beyond your borders. Um, and then if you're fortunate, you make good friends and you get to work together on little side projects. How do you think that has contributed to the, the communal, the community of the expats here in Danae? In Danae, it's the only thing of its kind. Danae is a pretty small it's a village, basically, the expat community. In, in, it's not big like it is in Hanoi and Saigon, but it, that's kind of lovely. Everyone knows each other. And we've brought in mostly our friends that we see hanging about. We even advertise our shows by dressing up as our characters, going off drinking with them in our characters and like having a great time. Uh, we've done pajama parties and stuff like that. It's been crazy. So um, it's there's no difference between who we are on stage and who we are in real life. We, we're branching out into more stage stage, more plays. And we're doing that more and more, especially because of our, the workshop's manager, Mao Sarah, who's had a, an extensive theatrical background. And I'm, like, I'm fully supportive of, of that because I had a similar background. So that's where we're headed now. But we've just been theatrical in our... Yeah, in really, every day, every day of our lives, no difference. Yeah, 
And that's different to what you'll get in Hanoi and Saigon. Anyway. Thank you very much for uh, watching our little side panel here, some Denang. Uh, for Team Eat Productions, I am Peter Gazzino. Like, share, and subscribe if you like what you saw. Ding.